Hello, I'm M.K. Davis. This is a video about a trip that I made um, with my wife, Debbie, to a place called Chaco Canyon. All right. And they kind of did this uh, little construction here in kind of the same style or design as uh, what we were going to see. The ruins there at Pueblo Benito. They say that the... Uh, hold on here. They say they used to call these people the Anasazis, but they no longer call them that. Uh, they call them ancestral Puebloans or ancestral Puebloans. Uh, they become out of out of vogue to say Anasazi, which means ancient ones. They don't know a lot about them. They know they lived here, but they abandoned this area suddenly. And that's kind of what the video is about. Some of my uh, reflections on, on that particular thing. And we'll, we'll just kind of uh, file through these files. Yeah, there I am. A few years ago. Debbie. And Pueblo Benito. Stay on trails, keep off walls. Uh, down in, <coughs> excuse me, down in this little canyon, there's a creek, and the creek provided water for irrigation and they uh, they did very well agricultural wise and and so they had these big sprawling uh, quite unbelievable apartment complexes or buildings you see at one time they were really large they were somewhere up to five stories high A lot of the stuff here at Pueblo Benito is still in the ground. They haven't ever excavated it. You can see the tops of buildings and stuff just right at the surface. You see where they, they fill this in? It used to be a doorway and they filled it in. And that, that's another puzzle. We'll get to it later. Some of these stones are cut stones. You see that they're made into the, the rectangle bricks. Just a... Uh, I guess chiseled out, smoothed out, and made into a building block where they could keep things level. And how they did that, it's just, I don't know. They were masters at it. And all that, all those little small holes built into it for what? Uh, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. They look like peepholes, like maybe you were behind this wall looking back out.
Some of these walls had plaster on them at one time. Uh, others never did. Uh, on the way out, on the way in, rather, uh, the road was so bumpy with stone, you know, just embedded in the road that uh, there were car parts laying in the ditch where it shook these parts off of cars and vehicles. and It was just one of the roughest roads I believe I've ever been on. But the place is full of stone. And they put it to good use. Some kind of little peephole. Now, uh, the impression that I got was that these were all walls, a lot of these walls were defensive, and that they had, you know, methods to to uh, return uh, an arrow back out through these walls at the enemy if they came up. And that's the impression I got. We don't know why they they suddenly abandoned it. They they put so much into it, and they were living prosperously. Then they say there may be may have been a drought that caused it, but I don't think so. They they had, they changed their attitude completely. They became fearful. See the wood that's left, you know, all these years. They just abandoned this place. It's hard to believe. They went to the hills, went to the mountain, more mountainous regions, and and fortified these ca uh, these overhangs and cliffs. You made cliff dwellings out of them, and you went up on a ladder, pulled the ladder up after you, got behind a wall, and sat back there until you had to go out and pe look out through the peepholes. And uh, that it definitely gives me the impression they were afraid of something. There you go. See the log? Old piece of timber. And they had to go a good ways to get big timber like that. And then had to, you know, haul it back. Uh, it was a lot of work.
some of these uh these openings in the like windows or in the corners of the construction uh really hard thing to do and they go straight across and come out the inside corner See the timber right there? Kind of dark up in there. A little bitty small doorway I'm not that tall and you see how I have to get in to get get through it Debbie, she might, she'd have to squinch up to get through there. There's another one of those windows that come out on the inside. Right there in the corner. There's the 90 degree. Makes you wonder about that. These uh, originally supported another floor and another story. These uh, wooden logs. But you see they're all broke off, broken off. And some of them are burned. That's what they call a matate. Uh, they they get a a rock that you hold in your hand that fits this little trough here, and they grind up seeds in it. See this right here kind of curves down. This kind of curves up. They meet, and then they it all ends up level at the top. Some of the stones are cut. Some of them are just naturally where they found them. And these are cut right here. There's repair work. You can see repair work right, right above this, right up here. It's different. You can look at those cut stones. Some of the bark still on this tree right here. Look at that. How old is that? This right here, this uh, opening that Debbie's going through, has been... Uh, added to or enclosed to make it more difficult to go through it and, and that's these are the kind of things that make me wonder why would they make the 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 doorways smaller so that it would be harder for a larger person to come through and they couldn't come through two at a time that's for sure
See where these are burned? They had a, a conflagration there. Uh, did they set their own place on fire for leaving it, or did did they have enemies come? Who would be those enemies? All right, you see where they fill this one in. They didn't want anybody coming through there, and it was hastily done with using mud as a mortar. Here's some more burned logs. Plaster. A quickly, quickly blocked window or door. These are the great kivas. They, they're not really sure what a kiva was for. Speculation is at one time that they were granaries, store food. They kind of dropped that notion. They, they said they were meeting places where they uh, put a, they had a wooden roof on top and they would get in there and sit around and try to think of what they needed to do next. But I, I'm, I'm inclined to think it, the, the role of the kiva was more important than that and and it's just unknown. This right here is it's in the shape of what they call a tau. It's the letter T. And that motif is found in ruins throughout the Southwest. Uh, my best of my understanding is it's it's uh, it's symbolic of the Southern Cross, a uh, group of a constellation of stars, and uh, the idea was that these are the stars that bring water uh, seasonally. That's why it leads me to believe that these kivas, this is not an entryway or exit, it's, it's something else. And they, these kivas are related to that. See where they had big structures inside the kivas. Uh, Heavy-duty structures. And they say, well, maybe they uh, sacrificed on those or something. Well, maybe they did, but I'm inclined to think not. I, I'm inclined to think that whatever was supported by these structures is gone. See how this log is kind of incorporated into the wall of the kiva and, and at an angle with this flat end uh, and, and a grade back against the grain. And there was another one right here at one time.
whatever was contained in this kiva, this law had something to do with. There it is right down here. <coughs> Excuse me. See where this one was filled in right here? No one comes that way. A lot of these kivas had double walls. You can see it right here. Uh, well, we'll get to it in a little bit. There were kivas that were unexcavated that you could just see the very top row of brick or stone. The rest was down in the ground filled in. So at some point in time, they quit excavating Pueblo Bonito and left the rest of it in the ground. This right here, you see a cable holds the wall up. <laughs> there, you got an eye bolt there. Better not snip that thing. Oh, look behind me there. That was filled in at one time. We could have spent several days I mean, in the canyon. There were other uh, pueblos um, and along the canyon, and there were some up on the rim. Um, but we had just so much time. Now we get to some of these uh, petroglyphs and other items along this cliff wall. This right here is a more modern petroglyph. Uh, 1887, as a matter of fact. H.L. Uh, Haynes uh, store, 10 miles with a backward S. Uh, down, down, 10 miles down the canyon. But there's no shortage of Indian petroglyphs, if indeed that's what the Anasazi or ancestral Puebloans were. Don't really know. Now this this right here has got one of those sine waves, and it's got a figure, and then the sine waves got an arrow pointing up. Uh, typically, 
the sine wave when it's when it goes from you know up down or up rather than horizontal it usually means uh uh one of the creative forces of god as applied to man so it kind of you know leaves me wondering what that meaning of that particular one is <clears throat> But I think we're going to get a little more into it here shortly. There's a horizontal sine wave. That usually means water. Like uh, we so often do. We depict waves, which are frequencies. This right here is a, a spiral. They call spiral. <clears throat> I'm having a hard time clearing my throat. Uh, if a spiral open to the right, it means to go. If it opens to the left, it means to come. So this spiral means it's part of a uh, some communication there where they say go this way or or that way it looks like the uh, most of the original is long gone and this right here is pretty worn out that sandstone uh over time will will deteriorate or wear now this is the interesting stuff here why did they leave so suddenly as if they were in fear this might give an answer. You have the sine wave going down, and it's in the form of a snake. There you go. Then you got this figure right here, which is not a human being. In cultures all around the earth, the, the snake is prominent, uh, even in the even in the Bible. Uh, in Egypt, they had a snake called Seta, and it was responsible for both benevolence and malevolence. But in this case, it's malevolence. Look at the claws. Big feet. Could this be why they had to leave? And why they were so afraid when they were here that they reduced the size of their doorways and stuff so that anything large could not get through or could not get through two at a time. And they, when they did leave, they... They built fortifications up under a cliff uh, or an overhang. And you, they got behind walls there and looked out these little uh, viewing uh, uh, boxes or holes toward the horizon. All threats came from the horizon. The, hor the horizon was figured prominently in all their beliefs. Beyond the horizon, if it was daytime, beyond the horizon was the dark. The, the, the time and place where monsters roamed.
maybe they were myths and maybe they weren't. I spent a lot of time on that particular figure because I want to make sure I got it and, and because I thought it was significant. You know, all these different plate wear patterns that they did. I, they say they were sharpening stuff on it. I don't know if that's the case. I don't know what they were doing. People always have an answer. But it's not always right. They yeah, drill these holes back in that stone. Some of them went quite deep. It's another figure with the large claws. I'm not really sure what I'm looking at there at all. Some more spirals that they open to the left. That means to come. This right here is not a spiral. It's concentric rings. And that's the symbol for the Almighty God Himself. Maybe it could mean something like uh, come to God or, or something like that. There again is a snake. That's the head. Is it benevolent or is it malevolent? I think it's benevolent in this case because of these these concentric rings that are symbol for the creator and then the symbol to come. I think that opens to the right, I believe. I believe that's the opening. If that if that's the case, that means to go. I'm confused by these. I don't know what they are. There it is, the sine wave coming top to bottom again. These right here look uh, amazingly like uh, Mayans. Or, or if you were Egyptian, it would be like the letter 
H. And it would symbolize the entrance to a room. And there's two of them side by side. To go. This right here, I'm, I'm unsure about. There were some uh, petroglyphs that, that I'm, I think symbolized a pine beetle, which was, uh, if you have a pine beetle infestation, you're not going to have any timber. Not out in those arid places. It would be a significant thing. But that, that uh, again, I don't know. Here's some, some older ruins that have not been excavated, still embedded in the ground. Uh, the rocks above have clobbered them. Metate with some pottery that people have picked up and set back down there. The uh, only thing I can figure out that this means right here or might mean is to go to heaven or go to God or go to the great spirit. Here's a spiral. And it means to come And this is the God's creative force as applied to man. And there's your man figure. Uh, it's, it could have mean something like uh, come to God or come to know God. <laughs> Here's another figure right there. Wow, that's some old grass there. These people just left. You see, they had a had a, a cross, and where they intersected, they drilled a hole. There's a very old one right up in here. I can't make anything out of it. But it's old. There's another sine wave going top to bottom.
I have no idea what this is. I think for some reason I am out. Hold on here. See if this goes farther. Oh, yeah, it does. Let me see if I can find the spot. Oh, it's got to go back. There we go. And they say that's sharpening things, but I don't I don't know about that. There's some kind of a deer. A standing deer in a petroglyph means uh, first man. And it's it's called a key. And it's, it reminds me of the Sumerians uh whose words for for heaven was on a n, and the word for earth was k i ki, and they put you put them together, and you get Anki, one of their gods, uh, heaven and earth. So its name means. Uh, so you know when you see a standing deer, it's it, it, it they're not talking about a deer deer. They're talking about uh, the very first man. I think this is to go. That's some old, old glyphs. Now this right here, uh, it looks like a kiva, one of those kivas that we looked at earlier, with a with a pyramid in it. I'm not really sure if this dates to the same time as some of the others. It looks fresher, but it is pex, and that's how they did it. Uh, this might tell you something about the kivas. I don't know uh, what they had in there on those those big structures. There's your pyramid. You can see it pretty well right there. Inside of that kiva. Some more writing. Here's some figures right here. A very, very beautifully done horse. See, with the mane and everything. They know about when horses were introduced. So they know about how old this is for, for sure. Some kind of a bird looking thing with deer antlers. These are symbolic writing is what it is. It's 
riding with symbols. Not that much different from uh, hieroglyphs in Egypt or anything else. Uh, the Mayas, Aztecs. Now we came across this. Uh, we it's impromptu uh, ceremony back at the visitor center, and where these Native Americans stopped and ha held an impromptu service. And I'll just uh, see if you, I can, uh, you, if you want to join me. I'll, I'll go into some of the video. Wow. While a eagle flies over, I think it's an eagle, maybe a crow. That's a crow, but he's a big one. A raven. They our crows around here aren't that big. Here's some more petroglyphs. All these animals down here on the earth, and it, this sort of symbolizes, and I think, uh, man's dominion over the animals. That's Fajada Butte. Uh, it's a pretty famous place. It's got a lot of stuff up there, too, but I don't think they, uh, uh, the people going up there had caused a lot of it to deteriorate, and I don't think they let you go up there anymore. But there again, what you're looking at is the sacred place of, of uh, that culture way back when. And the horizon, the horizon was almost everything. That the, the daytime disappeared over the horizon and plunged all the people into darkness. That was the time of monsters and nightmares. And then it cycles back. And you look for your enemy. 
you look back toward the horizon and the Egyptians, uh, Horus, the falcon, he flew back and forth along the horizon. And that's where the word horizon comes from, Horus. They recognize the, the roundness of the earth and that it would come back, yet you would go on a journey through the darkness and the Egyptians had you in a boat crossing a river and you had to have a guide and you had to make it through to get to the other side. But it all dealt with this constantly evolving horizon, named after Horace the Hawk. And now in the English lexicon, but recognized by cultures everywhere. He who resides above the circle of the earth, I think it says in the Bible, they knew. Great picture there. We had um, memories uh, that we'll always cherish from that trip. And there he was. He sat there and watched that whole ceremony. Now, it's a raven. It, he's way bigger than what we got around here. We got crows. And they're not a small bird, but this is a pretty good size. Yeah, it does. Some of it's restored. Uh, you see the restored part. It's got an actual drain. This is restored right here. It don't look quite like what the uh, what the ancestral Puebloans did. Uh, that's it for Chaco Canyon. This right here is part of the petroglyph national monument and uh, maybe i'll get to that one day and discuss some of these petroglyphs i think it's got thousands anyway uh, one of the largest collection of petroglyphs in one spot it's outside of albuquerque on the rio grande river wow well, anyway, uh, I thank you for your time.